it's April from April's Home and today I thought I would share with you a video that I've wanted to make for quite some time now and that is how to start a pantry for a hundred dollars. Before we get started on how to start your pantry for one hundred dollars I thought I would share with you why I think it is so important to have a pantry. As you know if you watch my grocery hauls I'm often um, telling you about the things that I've purchased for my pantry. And my pantry is something that I will be sharing with you at some point here, hopefully in the next month or so. I've been trying to get it rotated and um, ready to film. It's often a, a very working area of my home. I'm bringing in groceries and resorting things a lot. And so um, that's something I'm still working on. In the last year or so, I switched over from having my pantry in a closet to another area of our home. So it's, it's just in a little bit of a transition area right now. And that is something I will be sharing with you though. So I'm really excited to be getting that ready to share with you. Um, why do I think pantries are so important? Well, I grew up where every woman in my family had a pantry. They all had pantries. My mom, my grandma, my aunt, my great grandparents. Um, my great grandparents had an extensive pantry in, in their basement. My great grandma was a, an avid canner of, you know, all the things uh, that was she she was a homemaker during the depression era and a little bit before that my grandmother was raised um, as a child during the depression and um, so I would hear stories about things like that and and just interesting stories about my uh, grandma's life on the farm and how they lived through the depression and things like that so that's always been something that I've um, known about and thought about and has been important to me um, our pantry growing up was a, a nice big closet in the hallway, always full of, of good things. Um, we knew that there was always food in the house. I thought that that was really wonderful. My grandma's pantry was down in her basement, also in a big closet. And as a kid, uh, it was just really fun to look at. She actually kept a few toys in that same closet, in, in a lower part of that closet, um, for me and my cousins to play with. and. She kept little ice cream cones in there for us that uh, we would always have, uh, be able to have cute little ice cream uh, cones, little miniature ice cream cones when we were over at grandma's, things like that. So I have really fond memories of pantries. It's just a warm and homey uh, thing to me. I have kept a pantry in my home for my entire um, time being a married woman and a housewife. So that would be coming up on about 28 years. Um, and my pantries have been different in every house that I've had over the years. I think it's important to have a pantry because I think it is nice to have food on hand. You never know if there's going to be job loss or a storm that prevents you from going out or, or a natural disaster like an earthquake or something like that. Um, it saves money to have a pantry because you're not always running out to the store to grab something that you don't have on hand. If you have your core ingredients on hand, you can always prepare dinner, breakfast, lunch, things like that. Um, and it's just a good practice. It's a good budgetary practice and it's a good homemaking skill, I believe, to have a pantry. And over the last couple of years, we've seen supply chain issues and things run out and things like that. So I think now is a wonderful time to build a pantry. I think it's a wonderful, classic homemaking skill to have. I think every household would be better off with a nice pantry. So I think having a pantry is a wonderful thing and I hope everyone will start building their pantry if they don't have one already. And if you already have a pantry, I think this will be a helpful video just to give you some ideas, just to see if you've missed anything in your pantries or if you want to extend your pantry or something like that. Over the last couple of months, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube here talking about their pantries and starting to build their pantries and things like that. And I've heard people reference the fable, the ant and the grasshopper a few times, quite a few times. It's been, it just keeps popping up for me. And if you saw my recent um, Dollar Tree haul, I found this book, The Ant and the Grasshopper, and it is the story of the ant and the grasshopper fable where the ant has kept busy all harvest season long, all summer long growing um, her produce and gathering it up and storing it away while the grasshopper 
just plays all summer long and he doesn't store up anything. And then of course winter comes along and the grasshopper finds um, himself without food. And in, in this particular version, the ant does take pity on the grasshopper, brings him in, and then he learns his lesson. Um, the following year, he it works really hard along with the ant to prepare for the following year. So a wonderful little fable. I think this kind of goes right along with keeping a pantry. And so if you haven't read The Ant and the Grasshopper, I would encourage you to do so. I think it's a wonderful little fable and uh, just a great, uh, a great little lesson here for us all. So the ant and the grasshopper, that's another reason, another good reason to have your pantry. So then the next thing I thought I would talk about is why start off your pantry with a hundred dollars worth of groceries? Why not just get a little bit at a time? Well, I do think it is valuable to get a little bit at a time with every one of your grocery hauls, bringing home a couple of cans extra if you need a can of corn, why not buy a few so you don't have to go out every single time you need a can of corn or a can of soup or, or whatever it is you're needing. So that, yes, that's a valuable method. But if you do not have a pantry started, if you look in your cupboards and you can barely piece together a meal or two, or maybe you only have enough for that week's meals, then I would say to build your pantry, it's really nice to just start with a big base of food. It's going to be less likely to just get worked into that month's food and then you're going to start again next month with no food again. Um, so I just think it's a good kickoff, sort of a great way to get excited about building your pantry to see some instant results. So that's the number one reason why I think it's a good idea to just go ahead and dedicate $100 to getting your pantry started. It's a nice purposeful thing to do to dedicatedly start your pantry, not just add it in a little bit while you're doing your normal grocery shopping. If you don't have a pantry, there's a strong possibility that that food is just gonna get uh, eaten up with that month's groceries and you're not really gonna have a pantry still. And then the other thing to address is how to afford it. I know that with food prices today, not everybody has a spare $100 to start their pantry. And um, a young families especially, or people on a fixed income, that could be a real challenge. So I thought I would give you a few ideas um, to be able to afford the $100. I think it's, it's not as hard as you would think. You can cut out fast food for a month. That'll definitely go a long way towards getting your $100. You can avoid things like potato chips and snack foods and, and things like that that aren't quite necessary. If your budget is that tight that you cannot um, find $100 to start your pantry, then a $5 bag of chips, 20 times a $5 bag of chips or, or a pack of uh, snacky treats or things like that um, can go a long way towards it. That's a really expensive uh, item in grocery shopping. I've noticed recently um, going down the chip aisle that a lot of the chips I'm grabbing are three to five dollars a bag. That's a lot and that can really add up. Um, I love my little snack treats and I would say to replace your potato chips with popcorn for a month and that's a very affordable option if you just air pop or air pop some popcorn or pop it up on the stove, something like that. That can be another way. Of course, there are the typical ways, avoiding takeout coffee. I haven't purchased a coffee from a cafe in a really long time. Um, and a lot of you may not be doing that. If you're already on a strict budget, that might not be something you do, so you won't have that to cut out. You can also look on YouTube here. There are so many recipes for budget-friendly dinners. You can make so many wonderful dinners for such a low amount. There are just so many resources here on YouTube. I'd encourage you, if, if you want to pull out $100 from your grocery budget and you don't have any wiggle room, see how many low-cost dinners you can make for that month to see if you can pull that 100 out um, to do that. So definitely those options. I was so surprised. I had not ordered um, delivery pizza in a, a few years. So finally a delivery place, a new delivery place came to our town. I was having a young couple over um, to meet with my husband and I and I thought it would be really fun to order us takeout pizza for our little talk and, and have some quick dinner and just some fun like that. I was shocked. Just two basic little pizzas and I think some breadsticks 
and I'm pretty sure it was over $50. I, I was just uh, blown away by that. It was very fun, it was very delicious, but it has gotten very expensive to do takeaway pizza. Yeah, it's definitely a place that we can save money. Two times of pizza takeaway, you, you can have all this food here on the table. I think that's a pretty good swap out. Now, for those people who are really on a tight, fixed budget, people who are having a hard time just getting their monthly groceries, that is gonna be a little bit different. You're, you may not be able to do 100 at once. In that case, I would say break it into smaller chunks. If that's what you have to do to start your pantry, do that. That's when I would say, okay, if you don't have $100, just start maybe with 10. Start maybe with five. Um, look at some of the items here on this table and, and pick one little category of that. So if that's your situation, definitely do it that way. And of course, you can look into um, food pantries and things like that that will help people who um, need help with food insecurity. So there's always that for if you are in that situation. So that is what I wanted to say. It's important to have a pantry. I think it's a wonderful thing to do. I think you'll feel really happy to have a pantry in your home. And um, we talked about how to afford it. And now I'm going to talk just a little bit more about how to set this up and then I'll turn the camera around and we'll film everything here on this table to show you what I got at Walmart and the Dollar Tree for $100. I spent the bulk of my money at Walmart. I spent $90. I'll show you the receipt when I am done here. Um, $90.95 to get the bulk of this food. And then I wanted to get some storage containers because you are going to need some storage containers to store things like rice. Rice is always a wonderful thing, of course, to start in your pantry, but you'll need a place to put it. So storage containers can be rather spendy. Um, it is nice if you can invest in some really high quality ones with maybe a rubber gasket and, a, and an airtight seal. Those are nice. Perhaps you can buy a one a month um, as you get started with your pantry as well. But until you can afford that, I found these wonderful little containers here at Dollar Tree. They're just a little screw on little container here. They have a nice little gripping handle here so you can hang on to these. You could use this for sugar, um, brown sugar, rice, beans, things like that. So I picked up five of these at the Dollar Tree. They had a whole bunch at my Dollar Tree. Um, so I would definitely explore options like that. You would just wanna label label what you've got in it. And then you've got some nice um, containers. Containers help keep things fresh and keep away pests. So they are really an important part of the pantry is gra grabbing some uh, containers. And to kick off this pantry, again, I bought five of these at the Dollar Tree. So five at the $1.25 price was $6.25 for five containers. So I got those. The other thing, the only non-food item that I purchased at Walmart or some Sharpies. If you've seen any of my grocery hauls, you know that everything I buy that's a can, I grab a Sharpie, I pick up my can, I look at the label, I find the expiration date. This one is December uh, 28th, 2024. I don't worry so much about the, the day of the year unless it's something that has a really short expiration date. But on cans like this, I would write the number 12 for December and the year 24. So I'll write 12, 24 on the label, just like so, 12, 24. You can do that on the top or on the side. I put it here because I stack mine in my pantry. That way I can see it. This one would go in the back of my pantry um, or you know, organized with the furthest back date in the back of my pantry and the one closest to expire in the front. That way you can rotate your food easily, which is really, really, really important with keeping a pantry is keeping that food rotated. So of course you'll start with the $100 worth of food You'll work that in and keep adding to that, but making sure to write the dates so that when you start using them up, you rotate through them properly. So that is also something in our $100 budget, Sharpies here. And that was part of my $90 uh, and some odd cents that I spent at Walmart. The other thing that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, just for the sake of this video, was a six pack of water. This was $1.25. That's probably not the best deal, but for the sake of keeping this grocery pantry haul under the $100 mark, I picked up a six pack just to 
remind everyone that of course water is a crucial thing to have on hand in your pantry. Um, you want to have plenty of water for everyone. I like to grab water every time I'm at the store just so we never run out. We have a nice uh, amount of water just in case. So water is the number one item for our pantries and we should definitely include that when we're thinking about water. Of course, if you have a little bit extra, I would suggest getting one of those big cases of water or maybe a couple of jugs of water every time you go to the grocery store. So I'm about to turn us around to take a look at all these groceries. These are just some of my suggestions that I would start a pantry with. This is what I think uh, would be a great thing to start with. I didn't include um, things like flour and baking soda. That would be for another trip because when you just start out with flour only, you need a lot of other supportive ingredients to get that into an actual meal. Everything here on this table can be eaten um, and would be really valuable to have in a pantry. So that's why I chose the ingredients on this table. Of course, this is just a kickoff. This would be a $100 start to your pantry. Once you start your pantry, you'll want to add to it. And so for the things you'd add to it, you would pick items that you use, that your family eats, that you use, that you want to have around, and you'd buy those along with your grocery order that month. So perhaps that month you do your regular grocery shopping or once a week, however you do it. And then perhaps you'll buy 10 cans of peaches or 10 cans of green beans or something like that, just to add on to that pantry. And then the rest of your pantry can be built slowly over time or quickly over a couple of months, whichever your budget will allow. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you everything here on this table, $100 to start your pantry. Okay, so these are the items that I picked out to kick off your pantry. Let's go ahead and start over here with one of my favorite items for the pantry, and that is spaghetti sauce. I picked up the Hunt's meat sauce. This is very affordable still, um, and I picked up four cans of those. So four cans of Hunt's pasta sauce. Of course, you can choose whatever variety you enjoy. And then I got two boxes of the Great Value brand spaghetti two pounds per box so that is four pounds of spaghetti so right there is the start of four meals right there just add some veggies add a little cheese maybe and you've got a great dinner i think this is also a good item to have on hand in the pantry especially for quick lunches and things like that macaroni and cheese boxed macaroni and cheese the thing you will have to watch is this does have about a year and a couple of months uh, of a pull date here so you do want to watch that this isn't super long term but it does last a little while there and of course this is a great thing to have in your pantry for quick lunches so i got four boxes of great value brand macaroni and cheese and i also got a couple more pastas two boxes of the elbow macaroni so that's two pounds more of elbow macaroni you can mix this with chili which you'll see i also picked out um, down by the cans you'll see that you can also use this in different casseroles and things like that so a couple pounds of elbow macaroni so the spaghetti and the elbow macaroni here are representative of pasta same with this here it is a wonderful thing to keep in your pantry pasta if you are uh, gluten-free or wheat-free there are those options out there in the pasta category now wonderful pastas that are gluten-free um, and things like that so that would definitely be something you could swap out if you don't eat uh, regular spaghetti and pasta and things like that and of course having your tomato sauce uh, on hand, your pasta sauce. And of course, you can also add lots of other different tomato products, but this would be a great one to get you started. And here, of course, is salt. Everybody needs salt. Um, this is something that is really crucial in a lot of different cooking recipes. This Great Value brand salt was very inexpensive. Even the Morton salt is also very, very affordable. But yes, I definitely would say to have a couple of these on hand in your pantry. But for this haul, I decided to start with one, one pound here of salt. And you could choose iodized or not, just based on what you prefer. Actually, this is more than a pound. It's a pound and 10 ounces. So pretty good amount there of salt. And of course, to go along with the salt, pepper. Pepper is such a wonderful spice. This is great to throw in so many recipes. Um, so salt and pepper, those are the kickoff items for the spices that I think every pantry should have. And then of course, beyond that, you can start adding in other spices 
into your pantry. And then cookies. This is not a typical item in a pantry. This is is something for me that represents the treat category. I do think it's important in your pantry to have a couple of little treats just in case if you're having to exist off of your pantry food and you can't get to a store um, for one reason or another it is so nice to have just a couple of comfort food items in there. This was very inexpensive Delicious little sandwich cream cookies. My kids used to eat these when they were little. Sandwich cream cookies or any other inexpensive cookie that you wanted to have in your pantry. Again, make sure to label that. Cookies don't last as long as some of the other canned items, but if you look for some with a little bit of a longer pull date, that'd be a wonderful item to have in stock in your pantry. But of course, you'll have to tuck these in the back of your pantry. Just don't forget they're there. If you have a little ones who are always uh, peeking through the pantry to see what's good in there, that way you'll have these for a future date um, when you really need something extra special like a cookie. So this is definitely something I would add to the pantry. And then here, of course, the classic, one of the classic pantry items, rice. I bought 10 pounds of rice. It was very inexpensive, the Great Value brand. This is just wonderful to have. You can make so many different recipes with it. And frankly, sometimes it's just nice to have a bowl of rice, a little bit of soy sauce. I included soy sauce. This is a little bit of a more expensive item as far as some of the other items go. But I thought it was important to have something in your pantry to go along with your rice. It will really uh, help that out. And again, it all came in under... I only spent uh, slightly over $90 at Walmart, so I was able to get 10 pounds of rice and a whole big bottle of soy sauce. And then beans. I didn't stock up too much on uh, dry beans, but that is something that I always have in my pantry. This is something in the dry bean category that I love to have on hand in my pantry always. This is a pound of lentils. Lentils cook up nice and quick. Lentils and rice are wonderful together. So yes, a pound of lentils. And that would, of course, go in one of these containers really nicely. And then you can keep adding to it till you fill it up. You can get more if you want. And then pinto beans. Pinto beans are wonderful. You can cook them up in a soup. You can add a little ham to that or onion, things like that. And of course, once they're cooked up, um, you can turn them into delicious refried beans. I love pinto beans. They do require a little bit of extra prep. You do have to soak them the night before and things like that. They take a little bit longer to cook up, but they last a really long time in the pantry. So that's definitely something I would add to the pantry. A couple pounds of pinto beans. And then I mentioned popcorn earlier uh, as an alternative to expensive potato chips and things like that. We have popcorn a few times every single week. We love it. It's a wonderful snack. This bag here is a two pound bag of yellow popcorn. Great value brand. And this would be a wonderful thing to have in the pantry. Again, you'd want to put that in one of these little storage containers. So popcorn. And of course, one of the main items in a pantry are the canned foods here. So of course, I bought a lot of canned food in this haul here. I chose mixed vegetables. So I got six cans of Great Value brand mixed veggies. You can mix these in, of course, with your rice and beans. There you got a whole meal. Uh, or you can uh, throw these in with some chicken and cream of chicken soup. And you've got the beginnings of a really simple version of a chicken pot pie. Of course, my favorite veggies are not canned veggies. I love fresh or frozen veggies. But it's so nice to have these on hand in the pantry just in case you need them. And then we do love canned green beans. This is something we eat quite often, something my husband has always really enjoyed and my kids and even my grandkids. We all love uh, canned green beans. They're pretty good. So I got 10 of the Great Value brand cans of cut green beans to have on hand. That's a good start to the pantry. And along with the green beans, we also love canned corn. We use canned corn so often in a lot of our Southwest type recipes. We use um, corn in our nachos and things like that. And also as a wonderful side dish for a lot of our meals. So corn, I got a four pack of whole kernel corn. So that was what I started with for veggies. Of course, they have a lot of other veggies to start with. But if you had corn, green beans and mixed veggies, that's a wonderful start. And then I picked out some Campbell's soup. I got eight cans of Campbell's soup, four of the cream of mushroom. Cream of mushroom soup is a wonderful recipe starter. And of course you can just enjoy it as soup 
with some crackers on the side or something like that. But of course, cream of mushroom soup is wonderful for all sorts of recipes. And then tomato soup, another classic both for recipes and for just eating for lunches. So another wonderful classic item to have in the pantry. And you will see in my grocery hauls that I'm always including some sort of soups uh, in those grocery hauls. But of course, the two classics that I always like to have, tomato soup and cream of mushroom soup. And then for some protein items, I picked up to go along with our dried beans. It's so nice to have canned beans already cooked. They're ready to go great to toss in a recipe. I picked up four cans of black beans. We love canned black beans. They're just wonderful to have on hand. Another wonderful protein in the canned food category is tuna. This is a four pack of great value brand tuna. This is a wonderful item, again, to have in the pantry full of protein. You can use it to make tuna casserole and uh, tuna sandwiches and things like that. I am going to be doing a video coming up where I show you some different ways to use your tuna. And then here we have four cans of the Chunk Chicken Breast. This is also a great value brand. And I'm also going to be doing a video showing how to use the canned Chunk Chicken Breast in your cooking. It's a wonderful swap out for um, fresh chicken if you don't have time to make it or if you don't have any on hand. I love having a nice supply of canned chicken in my pantry. So I picked up four cans of those. And then I just had to include Spam because it is a pantry classic. Spam in the pantry is so nice to have fried up. It is a great alternative for ham or bacon, something like that. Um, a little bit of diced up fried Spam tastes great in beans, with rice. It tastes good with eggs for breakfast, things like that. So I do think it's fun to always have a few cans of Spam on hand in your pantry. And then another pantry classic, chili. We love the Nally original chili. This is my favorite chili. I love, again, using this in recipes and I love mixing it with macaroni to make chili mac, things like that. And of course, it's just good on its own with a few saltines, a little bit of cheese sprinkled on top, maybe some cut up onions. Chili makes a wonderful lunch and again, is great in recipes. So I picked up four cans of Nally's chili. I didn't pick up much in this run for the fruit category. Again, that is something that you would definitely want to add on in the future. In future trips, you'd want to start adding in some canned fruits. But I did grab some unsweetened applesauce. Again, great for baking. Also great to just as a side dish for eating. And then I grabbed some raisins. Raisins are wonderful to have in the pantry. Again, for baking and things like that. But also for the next item here, old-fashioned oats. These are a wonderful item for the pantry, a great, really budget-friendly breakfast. We love having oats around here. So nice big container here of Great Value Brand, old-fashioned oats to go with your raisins. And we love to have a little tiny teaspoon of brown sugar in our oatmeal too. So I included some brown sugar that would go over in one of those containers that I purchased. And we also love to sprinkle on a little bit of cinnamon. So we picked up a little tiny shaker of Great Value Brand Cinnamon. Wonderful with a little bit of brown sugar with oats and raisins. And then you have a wonderful breakfast. Also for breakfast, a great item that I always keep in my pantry is syrup. We love syrup. And pancake mix. Pancake mix is always wonderful to have. Yes, you can make your own with flour and a few other um, simple ingredients. But it's really nice to have a basic just add water um, pancake mix. There's all sorts of uh, wonderful, affordable pancake mixes for sale. This one was very inexpensive. So these would be wonderful items to have in the pantry. You've got some couple of breakfast ideas there. And then lastly, instant mashed potatoes. These are great to have on hand. I always have these in the pantry. They make a wonderful quick topping for a shepherd's pie. Just mix it according to the directions, add a little cheese, and there's your topping for a shepherd's pie. And also it's a wonderful thickener for soup, uh, like soups and stews and cream soups and things like that. I just shake in a few mashed potatoes and incorporate that in if I want to thicken up a soup or stew. So that's another item. And then of course, you can just have mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes with a little chili on top is a wonderful little meal there. So mashed potatoes, that's also a great item for the pantry. 
and the total of our Walmart order was $90.95. So very budget-friendly haul here. A great start to the pantry. A lot of canned food, some wonderful grains and rice, and even a fun little treat of some delicious cookies. And some Sharpies to keep everything labeled, and water and containers from the Dollar Tree. So all of this came in under a hundred dollars slightly under a hundred dollars so this is how you can start your pantry up so i hope you give this a try and i hope this gave you some good ideas for starting your pantry of course these are just ideas you can come up with your own list of ideas if you'd like but i think this is a really good way to start your pantry and as you know if you watch my grocery hauls i have a lot of these items in my last pantry stock up i stocked up a lot of these items already i have all of my rice stored, things like that. So I thought that I would go ahead and help my kids get started with their pantry with some of these items. And if these are items that they already have, we're gonna go ahead and drive some of this over to our local food bank. So that is what I'll be doing with this grocery haul. This will help get my kids' pantry started. They're working really hard on their pantry. I know they have a lot of this stuff already though. So that is what we will be doing with this grocery haul. So those are all the items that I picked out to start your pantry for $100. I hope you give it a try. If you don't have a pantry, I hope you go ahead and get started building yourself a pantry. It's definitely a fun project, really enjoyable, and it's just such a nice thing to have a pantry in your home. For more ideas on items to add to your pantry, I will link below a video I did about a year ago with all of the things that I consider my pantry favorites, my essential groceries, for the pantry. It'll give you a lot of ideas on other items to add to your pantry. I would love to hear in the comments below if you keep a pantry or if you're just getting started. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.